Raúl, so a couple of questions that have come up. Um, one, um, you know, we heard from Philippe this morning who was talking about surveillance and, and some of the different needs. But I was wondering if you could speak a little bit more on cholera surveillance and how that, you know, does that need to be differentiated by context and how? Yeah, uh, absolutely. Uh, during the, the presentations this morning, I think we uh, discussed, uh, were reminded several times, including by Philippe uh, Barbosa here, of the importance of, of surveillance. And during his recap of the outputs of the Secretariat, he you know, emphasized again the, the, the critical role of uh, improved surveillance. In fact, when we were working with the um, surveillance working group, it was very interesting that we uh, were like, oh, wow, are we still working on cholera surveillance? Something like, I don't know how many hundred years since we've been discussing cholera. But it's, it's normal since we are targeting the elimination of cholera. So it's absolutely normal that we revisit our surveillance guidelines just to make sure that they align with the objective of eliminating cholera by 2030. And when you look at the epidemiology of the disease, you know, and this happened for every single infectious disease out there, we want to make sure that your surveillance strategy is tailored according to the epidemiology of the disease. So you have uh, situations where you have a huge number of cases, big outbreaks. You're not going to conduct surveillance in those areas, you know, you know, compared to places where you have uh, sporadic cases. You know, Haiti, after three years without cholera, will not conduct surveillance like uh, Nigeria or DLC. So this, that, was, that was the rationale behind our, the discussions that, that we had around uh, updating the cholera guidelines. So we were looking at those aspects and we see how do we make sure that we tailor the surveillance according to the epidemiological settings. And there were also some interesting discussions that we wanted to formalize in the new guideline. For example, the role of RDTs. We have been using RDTs, you know, you know different ways, but we thought that it would be important to make sure that we clarify exactly what should be the, the role of, of, of RDT in, 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 in surveillance. So this is basically the background that we okay. are, that is guiding our work on updating the guidance. Great, great. Um, so the second question I'm going to ask you is related to, so you've mentioned so that we need some approaches that are a bit adaptive for, for surveillance. Can you make a comment on what does that mean for hotspots? Do, do we need to apply sort of um, similar approaches um, across all countries in terms of identifying hotspots? Absolutely. How is the same or different? And, uh, maybe I should even break the news here to say that we are not, we are kind of moving away a little bit from the hotspots names. We are moving towards priority areas for intervention. It kind of reflects more what we want to do. Hotspot is just hotspot. doesn't tell you exactly what you want, what is hot and what you want to, what you want to do there. <laughs> but <laughs> obviously... You heard it here first, folks. <laughs> obviously, uh, the, the hotspot that we've been working on, so the priority area for intervention, UNICEF sponsor a lot of these, WHO sponsor a lot of these, we are doing them everywhere, but they are basic, they are based on the, they are based on, the, on, this, on an assumption. The assumption is that we have high to moderate, you know, transmission. So we have a lot of cases. Because if, I don't know if you remember the hotspot uh, uh, methodology is based on the, the incidence, uh, the, the, the frequency and all these things. So we assume that there are cases. So that's what the methodology of the hotspot that we are using currently is based on. But with the elimination, we are moving towards, you know, epidemiological situation where you have fewer cases, where you have sporadic cases. So the rationale here is different. So in a, in a place where you have fewer cases of sporadic transmission, you want to be able to quickly spot an importation and prevent the, the importation from turning into a community transmission. So these are, that's really the, the, ra the rationale behind the, the re revisitation of the, the, the priority area for, for point okay. of And I'm sure it will not be the last revisitation uh, of the no, priority area. No. Great. Maybe by 2030, we'll <laughs> very different. Of Excellent. Um, and I'm going to ask you, like in 20 words or less, I don't know if that's possible, but can you um, tell us a little bit about the, we've got countries that are sort of moving towards elimination. There's been discussion on recognizing sort of 
call referee status for countries. And so what would this designation mean? And in a nutshell, can you tell us what the process entails? Like in like five easy steps or something? I don't know. I don't know how many steps there are. That's complicated because uh, <laughs> I, was, I was heading that uh, sub-working group. So um, the good thing is the color elimination framework document will be discussed. Is it tomorrow to? Yeah, by the, by the, the GTF system is steering uh, COVID. So the idea is that well, the, a country that has eliminated or interrupted cholera uh, transmission, community transmission of cholera over the past three years can be, you know, is eligible for uh, cholera free status. Of course, there's strong assumptions around the quality of the surveillance and, and all these other things. So, so what we have done, basically, we have... Uh, develop some very clear guidance document on exactly how to go about this. So very clear step-by-step -step process, uh, review committees, the application process. Uh, once you are certified as cholera free, it's not the end of the story. So what is the process that you put in place to make sure that you maintain this certification status because you can lose it or you can. So it's uh, just like in maybe or measles, so we kind of follow the same process. Okay. I, I hope I hope the the, the 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 steering committee will approve our document so that we can field test very quickly with few countries. Okay, excellent. We will see. We will see. Okay, so Raúl, you're getting out of the hot seat for a few minutes, but our audience are I see them writing questions, very. Uh, very vigorously, and I mean to the point where your point was it's blown up. What's going on? <laughs> there are lots of lots of questions. You're going to have to field those in a few minutes.